So why are we here? Let me ask you that question. Why are we here? Why are you here? Why are you here? Anybody? What's more important than water? Okay. Except maybe air. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could agree with that. How about anybody have any specific issues or problems or? I want, I want to have water, water redundancy, so okay. to speak, and the, because uh, I found out this last year that when the power goes out, so does my well pump. Absolutely. So I want to have a fallback. Okay. Excellent. Resiliency is found by redundancy, okay, in developing different ways. So that's excellent. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. I'm here for a refresher. Okay. And I'm just starting to looking for a piece of land to build on this summer, so I want to see. Excellent. Incorporate. Very good. You know what I tell people with, with hands down, if you're going to buy a property, two proven proven sources of water, two proven sources of water, especially if you're going to buy raw land, two proven sources of water. Okay, one of those can be a well, you know, and, and another one can be anything from a pond to a stream to springs, things like that. Were you guys going to say something in the back? Our, we have a property up north of Bonners, very tiny property, water, water everywhere. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to be addressing that too. We managed to get it out of places that we didn't want it, but okay. it's just Awesome. Very good. You, you have come to the right place. Good. Anything else? I'm hoping to hear a little bit more about some of the ways of, um, the ways of storing water okay. that are not so obvious to onlookers. Okay. Because um, I live in the Three Sisters area, and when we had the fire, one of my neighbors had a very nice pond, and that pond was immediately taken over by, you know, okay. helicopter crews. Fire buckets coming in, going. picking up water. And we needed to do that. Sure. But it was a wake-up call to several of us that are landowners in that area that, you know, if we look after ourselves and our stock, her stock had no water the rest of the summer. Okay. All right, that's a great point. That's a really great point. And if, and if we can get more and more people to have water resiliency, then we can also help our neighbors and, and build community that way as well. Excellent reasons. So I show you this picture up here, these two pictures, because you know right now, here we are talking about water. And, and in most cases, when we talk about water, we're talking about we need more of it, we need to keep it, we need to slow it down, let it soak in and spread it out. Um, and, but, in, but in a lot of cases, we might have a problem that I have too much water. It's pooling up all over the place. What do I do with it? How do I get rid of it? Okay, so all these are very important issues. And so on the left here, this is our property here. And you see all this, all this water. It's soggy. It's, it's moist. It's wet. And over here, you see it's kind of muddy and, and kind of nasty. All right, That's, this is a picture taken a couple weeks ago. And we're going to talk about it. We have to use what we call a sacrifice area for, for our animals because we, we want to you know, you'll, as you'll learn today, when we're on ground and it's really wet, we can compact it by, by working it too much, and we don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to talk about that, and that's one way that we can improve our properties is by not compacting the soil. Well, on the right, this was last August, or maybe it was July, August. Okay, all right, really dry, extremely dry. Everybody remembers that. We were severe drought up here. We had a forest fire start less than half a mile from our property, okay, just down there. I mean, like, boom, right down there. Okay, that right there. And for, of course, Monica and I were gone. We were gone on a road trip, so our kids were here holding down the fort. And guess what? They left within 15 minutes, gone. Pack your stuff. They called and said, hey, we got a fire started. We already called 911, reported the fire, all this other stuff. And they were the ones who reported the fire. And we were like, Get, grab your bags and go. And that's what they did, because you know, you know, this can this can spread very fast, very fast. Okay, so I think you guys are all here for the right reasons, and I I, I know you're going to get a lot out of today. So here's here's some of the things why I think it's important. So we have resiliency, which we've talked about, and one of the ways that that happens is we moderate flood and drought, and that's what we want to do. We can't control all of it. We can't control extreme drought, and we can't control a massive hundred-year water event. 
Okay, we can't control it, but we can moderate the normals. Like right now, we're having some pretty heavy precipitation. We can moderate those things. And what we want to do is we want to plan for the extremes. If we plan for the extremes, then we're going to mo be moderated when the normal heavy rain events come and we have pooling up on our property and things like that. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of things that were talked about, which we, which we, we covered, self-sufficiency, we want to be water secure. Okay, the vast majority of property owners, homesteaders, farmers are completely dependent upon the well, okay, which is completely dependent upon cheap energy, okay, the bottom line. So any disruption in that little cycle, we have problems and we want to be able to overcome that. Okay, so yes, water. I mean, it's life sustaining. We know that. We know all these things here. Uh, it's made up, the, you know, that the earth is 70 percent plus water, our bodies are 70 percent, our brain 85 percent. Hence why when we get dehydrated, we get headaches, right? So that shrinks down and our, our noggin bumps around in there and, and it creates headaches. Okay, so we want to be careful of that. But, but on the flip side, what does it do? It flushes toxins out for us, it lubricates the joints and our organs and things like that. We need it. Our animals need it and our gardens and our plants and our food forests need it. Okay, so on the, on the flip side, Water, not having enough or having dirty water is life-threatening. Everybody knows that, but we take it for granted all the time. Uh, so we, all these things happen when we get dehydrated. Has anybody here ever been really, really thirsty? Okay. Did you want anything else besides water? Absolutely not. Did you want a nice, juicy ribeye steak? No. You wanted water, period. Okay. 1.9 million people die per year from diarrheal causes, which is essentially dirty water, okay? It's bacteria-filled or, or viral-filled water, okay? So, so this is an extremely important topic. And what I wanna do now is I wanna give you an example of a comprehensive water strategy because my objective for you, and I hope your objective is, is to walk away from this workshop with at least an idea in your head of having a comprehensive plan. If nothing else, it's like, okay, the major elements of my property, People, animals, if you've got them, gardens, they all need water. And, and can I at least think of, okay, what's my primary source for that element? What's my secondary source for that element? And if you're blessed, what's my tertiary or source for that element? Okay, 